All right, guys, we are going to be doing another packet tracer lab in this video. Um, we're doing this 6.2.4.4 from the Cybersecurity Essentials course. Um, so get to your Network Academy, get logged in, and pull up your reading material, go to your course index, go to your packet tracer index, go to uh, chapter six here, and it's the second lab, 6.2.4.4. Uh, I'm going to download this PDF, I'm going to download this PKA file. Um, if you're in my class watching this video, you got to get these turned in for credit for the lab. Um, a filled out PDF saved and turned in and a um, completed packet tracer lab saved and turned in. So let's go to wherever you keep your downloads at. Once you get it downloaded, then you can just give it one click and wait on Packet Tracer to do its thing. It takes a little while to start some of these labs. Should see a page open up here any second. Or a, like a splash page letting you know that it's loading. Oh, there we go. Okay. So it'll take a few more minutes. Take yourself a short coffee break if that's what you're into. I'm going to give the dog a couple pettings while I'm waiting on this load. Oh, you're a good girl. Almost there. Full disclosure, I uh, normally walk through these labs at least one time before recording a video. Um, I have not looked at this lab at all. So this is all fresh material for me. Hopefully it doesn't go awry. <laughs> Uh, okay, so somewhere there should be a user profile window. For whatever reason, that didn't pop up to the very front like it normally does. Um, if you're in my course, make sure you put your name on your packet tracer file, which you have to do right here at the very beginning before you ever get started. So make sure you get your name put in here. Click your OK button for your user profile. Uh, we'll click this Doc button. That's going to put our and our instructions in the main window of our um, packet tracer interface and let's get going here um, again like i said i haven't walked through this lab i have not looked at it at all so hopefully i can get through it without any issues i think we'll be just fine um, so background in this activity you will harden the ios configuration of a router within the metropolis network afterwards you will enable the ios resiliency feature on a cisco router the ip addressing network configuration and server configurations are already complete you will use the client devices in the metropolis network to deploy the ios resiliency configuration sounds like a ton of fun here uh, part one hardening the ios configuration step one access the command prompt on sally's computer um, so we're going to the metropolis bank headquarters uh, pulling up sally's computer going to desktop and command prompt so this is metropolis bank headquarters right here this is good old sally's computer click on this checkbox for the top and going to desktop command prompt all right, uh, remote connect to the router HQ router, uh, SSH to the HQ router by entering this SSH command. Go, go ahead and copy and paste that. Uh, I'm going to enter that in the command prompt. Use the password Cisco1234. Tell you what, before we even do that, we're going to enter the IP command. Um, IP config command to see if Sally even has an IP address because if she doesn't you're not gonna be able to do anything on a network she does not so uh, press the up button to do that IP config command again and this time we're doing IP config but we're putting a space a slash and the word renew I'm gonna send out a little message there to our DHCP server and get ourselves an IP address okay so now she has an IP address now we'll be able to continue on with the instructions here um, if you're familiar with these packet tracer labs this is a common thing they don't actually uh, oftentimes have the end user set up correctly and you got to do that um, it doesn't say it in the instructions so that can throw some people off but uh, we've got it we've got her an ip address now so now we can take that we can ssh um, into that hq router or hopefully we can here um, 
That's weird. So you see I did a right click. See, I have this all selected. I right clicked and did copy. And then uh, I right clicked and pasted and it didn't, <laughs> doesn't match. That's very awkward. But let's just, let me just see what happens if I do it again. Paste. All right, so I paste it twice. Um, yeah, see, there should be a dash before that L. As there is over here. See, there's a dash right there. But there's no dash over here. Whenever I pasted it. I'm just going to hit enter to see what happens. Yeah, that's what I thought would happen. Interesting. Okay, so uh, if you copied and pasted it, that's not going to work. We're going to have to put a dash before the L. So that's an interesting little bug I never had happen before. Uh, okay, so we got our dash. I bet it'll work this time. Yeah, it's asking for a password. The password is Cisco. One, two, three, four, five. And you can see our command prompt has changed. We're no longer on the C directory of our local machine. We're now actually in the HQ router. Um, at the prompt, uh, this is step two, part B. At the prompt, type enable and enter the enable password class when prompted. Your prompt should display this right there. Uh, were you prompted by any warning messages preventing unauthorized users from accessing the HQ router? I don't know. Let's find out. So we type in the word enable, we hit enter, it asks for a password, the password is class, all lowercase. Okay, now we got, we are, um, we now have a prompt that matches. You see the change here, the change, it, it used to be a, a greater than sign, now it's a number sign. So it is matching there. Uh, were you prompted to do that? The answer there is no. N O. <laughs> uh, if you're in my class trying to get credit for this, make sure you go to that and type in no. So we're at step three here. Create a legal notification message on the HQ router. Um, at the HQ router prompt, which is where we are at, this is step three, part A. Um, at the prompt, enter the global configuration mode using the configure terminal command. So we want to configure terminal. Hopefully, uh, Copy and paste in works for this one. Configure terminal, hit enter. Okay, uh, at the HQ router configure, we're at step three, part B. Prompt, paste in the following commands. Let's see if we can't just do all of them. So we're gonna go all the way from this hashtag sign all the way to the very first B in the word banner. We're gonna copy it little concern because that copy and paste didn't work earlier looks like it's working slowly okay this enter key. Okay, I'm going to bring this back to it. Okay, so if you notice there, I you can enter these in one at a time. Copy, paste, and do one at a time. Or you can actually enter in them in manually. I recommend doing exactly what I just showed you. Um, if you don't get the same results here, like you should get all of the things that I copied and pasted and then end with that hashtag. Um, and then you hit the enter key once you're at the hashtag and be back to here. So you should see something very similar to this. If you're getting error messages or something, you're going to have to walk back through it again and figure out what's going on wrong. Um, so we're now on step three, letter C. Um, at the HQ router config prompt, use in to log out. Um, then we're going to SSH into the HQ router again. Okay, so we type end. Not exit or quit. <laughs> it's end for this one. And then we're going to SSH into it again. Oh, we're going to do log out. Sorry. So end to end the configuration session that we were in. And then log out to actually log out of the router. Okay, now I'm just going to press the up key until I get to that. Oh, it's right there. SSH command. So one press of the up button, get into the SSH command, make sure it's the one with the dash L because without a dash L, we, as we witnessed, it doesn't work. Password is Cisco123, one, two, three, four, five. Enter, 
And so now you can see now whenever we log into the router, we are getting a uh, basically a kind of a user agreement type of thing. Um, unauthorized access to this device is prohibited. You must have explicit authorized permission to access or configure this device. So this is letting you know if you log into this and you're not supposed to be here, it's letting you know that you're not supposed to be here. <laughs> Um, there is a question to be answered here. Uh, were you prompted with any additional text information when you connected successfully to the router? Uh, so two two part question here. So you say yes, and then the uh, unauthorized access message. Um, you don't have to type it, all of this in. As a matter of fact, I recommend you don't. Just put something like unauthorized access message. Uh, the message that we just told it to put in is an, is the, is an answer to. Uh, put in your own words explaining this right here while we got it. Uh, so part one, step four, enforce password security on the HQ router. So at the prompt, type enable and enter password class when prompted. Uh, part B, enter global configuration mode using the configure terminal command. And then once you get to that, uh, once you got a configuration session going, um, prompt and paste the following commands. All right, let's do that. So we got enable, password is class all lowercase, and then we're going to configure terminal. Can I press that button back to the, nope, I can't. Configure terminal. Now you can see our prompt has the uh, configure and the hashtag right there. So from the zero and the number 10 all the way up to the exclamation mark. Select all that, right click and paste. Watch it do its thing. Don't like that it hits the enter key all those times in between. <laughs> um, so as we've seen, it will run all the commands whenever you do it like that, all the way down to the very last one. You have to actually hit the enter button for the very last command whenever you are pasting in multiple commands at once. So let's hit that enter key. Okay, now we're on to part two here. Um, activating the Cisco iOS resilient configuration feature. Um, view the current iOS image. Um, Part two, step one here. While connected via SSH from size computer, enter the exit command to return to the router prompt. Enter the command dir flash to view the current iOS bin file. What is the name of the current dot bin file? So we're gonna do exit. We're gonna hit our dir flash. And what's the question here again? <laughs> What is the name of the current dot bin file flash? Well, looks like my local computer doesn't have any viruses at the current moment. That's good. Well, that happened in the middle of the video. <laughs> uh, the name of the current dot bin file and flash. Uh, it's right here. I'm not going to try and say all that, but it's right here. Starts with the C2900. So to answer that, I would just drag and select it and paste it into your PDF for an answer. Um, on to part two, step two, secure the running image and configuration. So we are at the HQ router prompt. We are there. See, we're currently there. Enter the global configuration mode using the configure terminal command. Let's go ahead and do that real quick with this drag select, right click copy, right click paste, enter key. We've started ourselves a configuration, or we're into the configuration of the router. Uh, use the secure boot image command. Let's go ahead and drag 
select, right click, copy that. Within the HQ uh, router configuration settings, prompt to activate iOS image resiliency and prevent the iOS from both showing in the directory output and prevents the deletion of the secure iOS files. Okay, let's just do that. I've already got that copied here. Okay, it's given us a little bit of feedback. Um, if you are not seeing the successfully secured running image, then you probably didn't get the secure boot image command entered correctly. Make sure you're seeing that. Now using the secure boot config command, which I just uh, select, drag selected and right click copied. Uh, if you're not seeing the I'm sorry, uh, use this command within the HQ router config prompt to store a secure copy of the running configuration and prevent deletion of the secure configuration file. So right click and paste that, hit your enter key. And not a real good, oh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the bottom line here. Okay, so yeah, successfully created a config archive. Not, but that's kind of a not the feedback message I expected. I'll take a look at it here. Secure boot tech config. All right. So I would assume you should probably have those same feedback for you on your side. You're following along with me here. Um, if we uh, finish this lab and it doesn't show that we did that, we might have to come back to this, but we're going to push on through here. So um, part two, step two D, uh, return to privileged execute mode by entering exit. So copy paste the word exit. Well, I should just type exit. And now under the command dr flash. Bet we're going to see something different this time. I just pushed the up key until I found it. Oh, I'm all over the place. Okay, there we go. Got DR flash. I hit enter. Hey, where did that bin file go? See here before when we did that, we had a, a bin file. No, we don't. Um, are any iOS bin files listed? No. The answer to that is no. No. <laughs> um, at the HQ router prompt, enter the command show secure boot set. On a select, drag, select, copy, right click, copy that, right click, paste it into our command, and hit enter. Lost my place here. Where did I? Okay, there we go from this line down that's what we're looking at so uh, it's giving us our secure boot set information uh, to view the status of the Cisco iOS image and configuration resilience so this is showing us our current uh, resilience configuration okay that's the end of the lab let's see how we did and hit this uh, go ahead and close this hit this check results button like i said i hadn't been through this before i hit the record button so hopefully we're good Just thinking about it yay all right uh, if you followed along exactly you should have the same thing here congratulations you successfully completed the uh, page 6.2.44 packet tracer blah 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 if you're not seeing that, even if you are seeing that, let's check out your assessment items. You should have green check marks on all these. If you don't have green check marks on all these and you don't have this congratulations message, then go back to the part of the lab where you don't have check marks and figure out what went wrong and get yourself all green check marks. If you're uh, in my course watching this video, save this and turn it, turn it in along with a filled out PDF along with a filled out PDF here with all the correct answers that we just went over. Get yourself full credit for the lab, and you guys have a wonderful day.